11.2. Representing. Representing outcomes. I can use tree diagrams to represent outcomes. So we're using tree diagrams to represent outcomes. We know what a tree diagram is. We know an outcome is an end result, and a sample space would be all the possible outcomes. Just to review, if I have a quarter in my hand, if I took the quarter that I gave Abe, what is my sample space if I flipped it? Anthony, what is the sample space if I flipped a quarter? Two is not the answer I'm looking for. What is the sample space if I flipped a quarter, Jonathan? Heads or tails. Heads, tails. Heads or tails. There's two possibilities, but I want what they actually are, Anthony. Uh, tree diagrams. Uh, so Abe was tossing a coin. We wanted to know what would be the sample space, what were all the possible outcomes if he flipped a coin twice. So we drew ourselves a tree diagram. On the first flip, you can get a head or a tail, as you see. On the second flip, then, if he had a head, he would get a head or a tail. And on the second flip, if he had a tail, he'd get a head or a tail. And all together, these were our sample spaces, our possible outcomes. What are the chances, you guys? Well, what are the chances that Abe is going to flip a tail and then a tail? What's the probability? One in. Favorable outcome would be one. Possible outcomes would be, huh? Two, there's two possible outcomes here in our sample space. One in four, right? So there's a 25% chance, which is what one in four is. Number five, we have Oddbot and his ice cream and his different ice cream cones that he likes. And we put together a couple of different tree diagrams. So you can see that the first tree diagram has a lot of funky things going on with the arrows. The second tree diagram is a little bit, according to me, more organized. And then right here we ask the question, what is the probability? Oddbot will choose a cone with vanilla ice cream. This right here is vanilla. The probability is 3 out of 12, which is 1 fourth. Last one then. Applying this to the uh, marble pulling, which we just went by, is the fundamental counting principle. When given choices and attempting to determine outcomes, multiply the first set of choices by the second set of choices. Here's our example. How many students are in our class? 29. What are the chances that we're going to draw your stick? One. One. So if we draw your stick, we have how many sticks left in the jar? 28. What are the chances we're going to draw your friend's stick? One. One. So our example was, what are the chances we're going to draw Tiffany's stick and then Fatima's stick? So if we drew Tiffany's stick first, it would be a 1 in 29. And then we would have a 1 in 28 chance of drawing Fatima's stick. If we did that, we would draw Fatima's stick after Tiffany's stick once every 812 times. Once every 812 times, which we figured out would be a very small percentage. Fundamental counting principle, pretty important. For those of you looking out the window, I hope you got this. Questions before I stop the video?